All right. Now, joining us for this month's Outside Looking in Chat, British Chamber of Commerce's of the Philippines Executive Director, Chris Nelson. Hi, Chris. Welcome back to the program. Good to see you. Yes, and good morning to all your viewers. Great to be back. All right. Um, Chris, I want to start with a big picture and ask you how the UK economy is doing and how UK investors' appetite is today um, for investing in countries like the Philippines. I was going over some interesting numbers. And for example, um, you've got um, your economy, the UK economy, returning to growth for August, a marginal 0.2% GDP growth following a very sharp drop in July. Your rates are steady, 5.25% as of September. It ended a run of 14 consecutive rate hikes. So um, your central bank is on pause. That's because your inflation has started to ease. So do you get a sense, a general sense that, you know, UK businessmen and investors are feeling a little bit better about the UK economy today and therefore are more willing to take bets, aggressive bets, and invest in countries like the Philippines. Yes, I mean, like you're right to say, actually. So the UK economy is uh, obviously now starting to trend better. Uh, the key, as in many countries, is inflation. And inflation has started to taper down. And that's allowing uh, Bank of England to pause. Uh, I do think that in the UK, uh, and I would just emphasize this, and we've been particularly strong on that, we've always been advocating for the benefits, the opportunities in the Philippine market, mm -hmm. uh, along with ourselves and the British Embassy. Uh, I'd just like to make a note that we've just had the Philippine British Friendship Day, which was the 20th of October, uh, and that just reinforces the strong ties. So coming forward, I do believe the UK companies and British companies will always be looking at Southeast Asia for the opportunities, uh, and we keep reinforcing those for the Philippines. And again, uh, as we've discussed before, the signing of RCEP, the regional trade agreement, uh, the constant dialogue and investments, and the opportunities that lie there. So yes, you're right, the UK economy is looking better. But I think in terms of British investors to the Philippines, it's always going to be as well the longer term and all the work and advocacy we've been doing, and along, mm -hmm. of course, with the Philippine Embassy in London. Now, before we get to the specifics, um, you know, we may be in different boats, but we are in the same storm. Um, we're also dealing with high inflation. Our central bank just pulled the trigger on an off-cycle rate hike, 25 bips, bringing our benchmark to 6.5%. Um, what significant impact on British appetite for investment do you see from this local environment here in the Philippines? I mean, when you talk to your member companies here in Manila, what are they telling you? Well, I still think they're very optimistic about the Philippines. I think also if we take that off-cycle rate increase, I think that's uh, showing sentiment that the Banco Central is obviously wants to and is treating inflation very significantly. It made that point by the new governor. And I think also what people are looking at is obviously taking into account actions on inflation. Um, and you can see that happening. Uh, of course, it will have some impact in terms of obviously what people can borrow at. But I think controlling inflation, as we've seen that across in the US, we've seen it in the UK and in Europe, is a key element. So I think in that context, it reinforces the government's approach to the economy or Bank Banco Central. Uh, and in that link, I would just say, of course, uh, in that also they're talking about inflation and how they can assist in that and as we've discussed before in that context in terms of food inflation hmm. obviously we are helping there in terms of obviously specifically of course with uk exports of meat particularly pork uh, and that's also been welcomed and we think that will continue so uh, I know that you guys submitted a position paper uh, talking about your policy agenda for the extension of lowered tariffs on pork imports. Um, of course, this was signed back in December 2022. It's going to end December 31 this year. And you guys are one of the parties hoping that this gets extended. Uh, this executive order number 10 lowered tariffs for um, corn imports to 5%, for example, pork imports to 15%, and rice imports to 35 Is there any indication that this government will indeed extend the lower tariffs, the executive order number 10? What are you getting? Well, like we're, well, yeah, we're optimistic. I mean, if you look at also from the departments, I mean, the Department of Agriculture, 
the spokesperson actually referred to the fact that they were looking at pork uh, imports as a way of potentially offsetting potential shortages. Uh, the economic team is, we're looking at another event coming up actually uh, on the 30th of November next month to re-emphasize the long-term relationships mm. between uh, the UK and obviously the very large meat importers here. So I think we are confident. I think the government sees that continuing to opening up the economy will help with its fight in inflation. I think that's also been noted by the economic team. So we remain confident. We also like to thank the Tariff Commission for welcoming our position paper. And obviously we observed the discussions on the 23rd of October. We had submitted our paper on the 26th. I'd just like to add as well, we are strong advocates of a a good overall uh, vibrant and dynamic agricultural sector here and we can help in that in that context we do also support the government's aim to pass the anti-agricultural smuggling act uh, that was noted in president mark this sonar speech and i think that will help to reinforce it so yes we remain confident it will be extended and that british pork and meat will continue to be coming here and grow and assist in food security and inflation. All right, Chris, I want to shift gears now uh, just a little bit because we're coming from the village and youth council elections yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was a holiday. I wonder, as, as the British Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines, do you guys deal with barangay officials, for example? And, and if you have, what's been your experience like? And why do you think electing the right people to these posts is critical to ease of doing business, especially for foreign investors. Well, look, I think overall, uh, any election which is run well and smoothly, uh, and we wish all the candidates the best, uh, and I think that's been shown by your reports, in general, it's gone very well. So I think that's a very important statement. In terms of dealing with the barangay, uh, I think they're very important in terms of local initiatives. Um, we specifically, as the British Chamber, uh, our offices are in uh, Bonifacio Global uh, City, BGC, and we have very good relationships with, obviously, uh, Tagig. And I can say from a personal basis, living there, uh, it's actually an efficient operation and supporting us. So I do believe it is important. It's very critical in terms of ease of doing business. We can always see improvements there. This has been noted. And again, as you're aware, our members deal obviously with various national organizations, but also engage with their local organizations. So I think having uh, very good and effective elections and getting the right people. And I think the other thing is it supports specifically, I think the government's looking at public investment for MSMEs, which is a critical factor within the Philippine economy. So yes, Barangay elections in the overall statement is very important. And the interactions we've had, as I said, as the British Chamber of Commerce in uh, BGC as part of Tagig has been obviously very good. And we thank them for all the support they give. All right. Um, and final question. I want to end on this topic, cybersecurity. We talk a lot about this, but it seems we haven't really improved. Even our, even the department that's supposed to, you know, tackle cybersecurity issues got hit by hackers. I mean, what are some of the concrete collaborations, the, the low-hanging fruits that you see, that the UK and Philippines can do together to fight cybersecurity, cyber criminals? Well, look, it's a challenge across the world. Just as why I think at the moment there is an AI artificial intelligence summit going on uh, mm -hmm. in the UK, hosted by our Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. And I believe actually the Secretary for DICIT, uh, Secretary, Honorable Secretary John New, is going to be attending that. Uh, I believe that cybersecurity and one of our key company, one of our members, is CyberQ. Uh, they've just recently signed a member of understanding with the uh, SEC to provide awareness and to keep them updated and they're leading experts on cybersecurity. Look, um, cybersecurity maybe is gonna be a constant challenge, not just in the Philippines, but everywhere. And I think what's happening is one, getting people aware of it, uh, because obviously a lot of the cybersecurity, unfortunately, impacts individuals as well as organizations. Two, getting cybersecurity awareness, and that's why having leading providers like CyberQ and dealing with organizations will assist. Will it go away? No. I mean, if you look at obviously the hackers and the, the challenges, they're obviously developing. But I do mm -hmm. think it was very important that President Marcos did signify 
this month was cybersecurity awareness. And we as the British Chamber of Commerce, as I said with our members, that's why we had the webinar with CyberQ and others and DICT, will continue to strive to support the Philippines and also assist from the UK. And it's great to see uh, that Secretary Yu, according to our information, has traveled there and will attend the Artificial Intelligence Summit. All right, we're looking forward to finding out uh, what are some of the important critical conversations at that summit. Chris, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure and wishing you all a very good day and uh, holidays ahead. Thank all you very much. See you next month.